Hello there, I'm Mike Universal, I'm actually the geeky and nerdy. You know, I've met some people through online and in actual real life who come to the thing of Daredevil the movie from the early 2000s sucks. Really? I thought it was a damn good origin story for the character. I thought they followed the origin of him pretty well done, we saw. But a lot of people really beg to differ. So let's just give my opinion on if Ben Affleck Daredevil really does suck. So, the mo so in case you don't know who Daredevil is, it should be pretty obvious by this point because the character had so much recognition going out throughout the years. Daredevil was created by Dan Lee and was also created by Bill Everett. Everett was the guy who created the Submariner, one of Marvel's biggest and long time successful characters. Stan Lee decided to write a character who was blind, taking a big, huge chance and a big leap from going from a character who probably could not have been blind because he was afraid that people who were blind would be like, uh, this is uh, not a, my type of hero and is this supposed to be some type of superhero parody or something? But surprisingly, he turned out really damn good and Daredevil over the years has gotten pretty well done. He's had a lot of interesting story, had a lot of interesting characters, and had some pretty developing points. Regardless of that though, people think the movie sucks. Hmm. Alright, well, let me just discuss what I liked about the movie, and then some things I didn't like. Part one of what I liked, they handled the origin really well. About 10 minutes, almost 15 if I'm correct, of this f first half of this movie is about the origin. Matt Murdock's father, Jack. Jack the, dev Jack the Devil Murdock. Jack Murdock was a boxer who always fought in the rain and wanted to teach his son Matt not to box in the rain. The same thing that actually happened in the comic book. Jack kept telling Matt, I don't want you to do what I do. I want you to be your own man. And Jack was, a, was also a, on the side, a guy who also was hired on Kingpin part. We'll talk about him in just a bit. But when after Matt saw what his father was doing and basically knew who he worked for, he really got upset, ran away, and developed getting blind thanks to a, thanks to a chemical. While the chemical didn't kill him, and although it should have, it gave him superhuman chuck a superhuman scent, or almost like an echolocation, so Matt can hear the environment around him and basically give him an echolocation of the area surrounding him, giving him a better chance to actually fight. So at, when this happens, Matt actually goes to his own personal training above the concrete jungle of New York. Here's where I enter a little bit of a gray area. In the story, Daredevil trained by sticks. Stix is the blind master, he's the blind martial artist, and he's a damn good one. He taught Daredevil the ins and outs of how to fight. The problem is that the movie didn't have him really kind of make me a little upset. He pretty much was there from the get-go almost, so it would have made sense if Stix was in here. And don't tell me that they couldn't find anyone for Stix. Anyone can basically sit right there, pretend to be blind, on camera, for the role. I, I'm not saying that you're gonna have to use an actual blind person, but you can do what you did for Ben Affleck, the contacts. Is it that hard? So, next let's go to the main baddie of this, Michael Clark Duncan as Kingpin. People, if you're against Michael Clark Duncan doing Kingpin, just because he's black, one, that's racist, two, that's stupid, and three, he, in my opinion, he's the kingpin. He captures everything about the kingpin, how powerful he is, how he, pleasurable that he can do a job, and also how his brute size and strength can overcome almost everything. Michael Clark Duncan actually, I believe, he stated that he worked out for this role and paid off for him in the end. This was a guy who needed to get ready on every part of him, and he pulled off a very impressive campaign. 
And in my opinion, again, yes, Michael Clark Duncan is the goddamn kingpin. He did such a great job. Colin Farrell at Bullseye. Okay, I have to point out a little bit here. Colin Farrell pulls a pretty good Bullseye. He manages to capture the emotion of the character, what he's supposed to be doing, the hitman authentics. Uh, basically, a work for hire, so to speak. But... I'm not really so big on his Bullseye. While I admit I enjoy Colin Farrell at Bullseye, I think he played a very memorable role. Not a big fan of the tattooed Bullseye on his head. I know probably Colin Farrell would have been like, yeah, no, I'm not wearing a skin tight uniform and going around trying to kill somebody. Not going to work for me. But I could have found some way to give Bullseye a different identity. But turning him into this probably wouldn't be the best way to go. Next, we'll talk about Jennifer Gardner of the, of the story, Ben Affleck's wife in reality, and turned wife after the movie, who played Electro Nachos. Jennifer Gardner is fucking Electro Nachos, okay? She does an amazing job as the character of Electra, showing off how she can be a very heartfelt character, touching, warming, everything Matt Murdock wanted to be. <laughs> Sorry. And then destroy him in the end by destroying her first. That was perfect. The way how they set it up that they were going to destroy Electra first, Daredevil second. I was like, that's, that's perfect. That's brilliant. Where was this? I thought that was perfect. Then again, I wasn't that old when I was out and seeing this movie. I was like eight, nine. I think. But that's perfect! You set it up a very good character right then and there. Not, no more, no less. You did a great job. So there is one thing that they do touch upon with Daredevil is that he's supposed to have faith in God. I think that Daredevil's supposed to be Christian. And his, in the comics, his mother is a, um, <clears throat> his mother is a nun. So it kind of does play out a little bit on him when he goes and sees the father and he confesses. The father knows who he is, which I, I think that's very helpful. So in times of need, Matthew can always go to the church at the same place as always churches are. Now, let's discuss a few more little I don't like things here. Daredevil's costume seems kind of laughable. And in regards to Daredevil, I love Daredevil's costume in the movie, don't get me wrong. But if you look at the costume in the TV series that came out years later, you can kind of see a big difference between the two. And I think that the Kevlar on the TV series costume would keep Ben up, would keep Matt Murdock in that series a lot safer than this one. I mean, it's kind of like you're looking at two different universes of, of Matt Murdock here, but... Yeah, if he wanted to be, you know, safe and not get injured, I think he'd want to wear the Kevlar and the bulletproof armor so he wouldn't go, you know, and be like all oh, like misrained and all that. So, yeah, man, I, I really do think that it's like, okay, what are you going to do with Matt Murdock in this? And they decided to give him a leather outfit, and I was just sitting there going, Yeah, you kind of gave him some Kevlar, just in case. <clears throat> so, I do, I'm against that. Secondly, I'm a little bit against Jennifer Gardner's costume, because she went all black in the movie, and I was like, well, Electra's supposed to wear red. Not ideally black. Well, I admit, she was very sexy in it, and very fucking attractive. I have to say... Again, probably red would look better on her, because in the movie Electra, her costume is very well recognizable, and it's a throwback to Electra. Here, it's not really. And the final showdown with Kingpin and Daredevil. Okay. 
I don't like that. Ideally, yes, it's a great final showdown to show who, to show the power of both Kingpin and Daredevil at the same time. However, you kind of cheated toward the end of it. I'm not gonna explain how, but until I review it. But pretty much, it's like Matt Murdock technically cheated, and I was just sitting there, kind of going, "Really, Matt Murdock." Really? There is one thing that I also do like on here is that they play on him as a lawyer, which I'm like, okay, great. We don't actually focus on the superhero. We focus on the man on the other side. That's brilliant. And this is something that Daredevil and the Spider-Man movie did well, except for Fantastic Four, the original Hulk, Iron Man, like, you know, okay, I get Iron Man's supposed to be the man in the costume, but which we're supposed to be focusing on Tony Stark, the billionaire, the mind, the brain, and in my opinion, yeah, he is supposed to be sort of like a playboy. He, he's supposed to be like a playboy kind of thing where he goes around and he has women eventually underneath his belt. But you people realize that Tony Stark is more a deeper character than that, right? Just throwing that out there. And, okay. I love the, the direction of this movie. I like how it uses dark atmosphere to really give a point across, which I actually really do love. I love the acting in this. All the actors and actresses do an incredible job, especially uh, whoever played uh, Jack Murdock. I don't know who that is. Um, he did a fantastic job. Everyone did fantastic. I love the mu the music and that the music really does sell the movie and uh, at some points this film, uh, especially Evanescence performing I think two to three songs in this. So they did a fantastic job. So yeah, don't listen to people just because they say that something sucks. And honestly, I don't. I see it for myself and I judge it for myself. As a guy who's seen movies and the guy who's done done YouTube for a while I saw I seem to really get into it because like that because I had some other critics had said through through the power of YouTube you can't judge too quickly and which is true you have to give something a try before you can judge it so in my opinion please check out Daredevil this is the one I've had ever since I was a little boy I remember getting it from my birthday from so yeah and this movie came out in 2003. I was born in 1995, so I was eight years old when I first saw this movie. My parents covered up my eyes when something violent was happening, and during the sex scene. Which, okay, the sex scene is kind of awkward in this movie. I know it's supposed to be touching. Plays out pretty awkward in the movie. Just saying. Not as awkward as the room. Would tell me where Joe, but probably not pretty awkward. So in my opinion, no, Daredevil does not suck. While it could have had some improvements, and while it could have had other things that weren't better for it, no, it does not suck. It plays on the uh, John Romita Jr. and Frank Miller uh, Daredevil story. I think it's called Daredevil Year like, One. I think it's called. So uh, yeah, they do do a really good job of that. Also, I would have loved to see Daredevil's very first costume. By that, I don't mean the yellow one necessarily, I mean the one where he has a bandana tied around him, where he almost looked ninja-like, just for maybe a, a, a couple times in the, in the film. But regardless, it's a very good film, and I love it, and I love it. I still love it to this day, whenever I pop it in my uh, Xbox or I pop it in my DVD player, I still really do love this movie. So if you haven't given this movie a chance, all I'm going to tell you is, you, you won't regret it. If you give this movie a chance, you won't regret it. So, let me know what you guys think in the context of the world. Do you agree with people saying, oh, yeah, devil, the movie, yeah, it, it sucks. Or do you disagree and say, no, it's actually a pretty good rendition of the character. Let me know in the comments section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Join me at Twitter in the comment section down below. Which, by the way, hashtag Twitter is a drama field. I'm pretty sure you could write, you could render that down to like hashtag Twitter drama field or hashtag drama field but yeah it's from what I saw as I'm pretty cold and 
this in the other video. And the last one, yeah, uh, just gonna scoot that problem out of over here. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will be back next time with another DQ and OD video. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.